Hey, I'm the Castle Line Gamer. Welcome back to Tennis Manager. It's episode number 17, and we are here at the Junior Tour Finals. Only eight players qualify, and we come in as the number two seed just behind Frit Fritova. Frit Fritova stands to lose more points because she was part of this tournament a year ago, and therefore, on that count back, we actually have an advantage. If we get as at least as deep as she does into this tournament, will come out the number one seed. But of course, it'd be nice to come out the winner of this one. For this finals, 750 points, 20,000, so a nice little payday we're going to get regardless. We've got a South African up in the first round. She comes in as the five seed, ranked number six, as Katrina Scout is absent from this tournament, along with a couple others and at least one other in the rankings. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I want to say Chager. So Chager, just 16, that that should be a good one to uh, scout. In fact, let's over to her name. Oh, I can't do it from there. Well, uh, I'll try to get her scouted at some point, but we've never done a head-to-head, -head, so we have no idea how she's going to do, but she's won two of her last four tournaments that she's participated in, but we're looking at kind of lower-level junior tournaments uh, that she's done, so she's really not getting that deep, but she was in the semis of the... New York Junior Open, as in the U.S. Open, the one that we went out in the first round on. So she picked up some good points on that occasion. All right, so we open losing the first game, but we are uh, now with service and carrying through this second game. Looks like we'll take control, and we do. So 1-1 one, one after a game each. And we'll kind of see how things progress. Uh Cousin Zeva is not somebody you can talk to. Mentally, she is so weak. I mean, it's it's like trying to rationalize with a toddler. And believe me, I know what that is like because, well, I own a daycare. And I spent a good 20 minutes earlier today trying to rationalize with, uh, well, a preschooler even who just was kind of lost on on a matter and it happens well that's that's like trying to get through to Kostin Seva so uh, our pregame chat only made her worse but after losing game number one we have taken total control of this match it's now 5-1 on this opening set chance to put it away but we are going to have to play at least one more game in order to do that as it's now 5-2 but with service looking good 40 love and we open with the first set and halfway towards making it to the semifinal. Chance to break in this first game. Gain control early, but it keeps going advantage the other way. And then we battle back. Finally, she puts it away. And we trail one game, nothing in this second set. And with two quick games we're actually in a bit of trouble here that it could draw back level she's got herself some momentum we're still troubled so even winning a set has done nothing to help cousin zeva's uh, morale which is just absurdly low thirty love in a very important game pull it back to three two with that one we're working the sides really well at the moment, not missing very much, but our opponent seems to uh, get side to side. We're not getting too many winners that way, but some. It's the back corner where we're seeing to get more winners. A uh, little less power on the side. She seems to be able to move to those nicely. One game, one game short of uh, dropping the set. I mean, we've at least done better than she did in the first set. And we do drop the set, and it's now 1-1 into the decisive third set we go. Working the edges, but she missed a couple in a row there. Yet we still go up two games to none. It's 40-40. Deuce. And we drop that one. Boy, that would have been a decisive moment to go up 3 nothing, but chance to steal this one and we do and now at 3-1 it is looking pretty good I mean, we've already won as many games as we did in the last set still missing a bit aggressive to play the sides and it works or it doesn't work 
advantage. No, now the other. Oh, that game went on for ages. Back with serve and at 4 2. Now Deuce, that was a double fault. Ouch. Bad way to let her back in as it was 40 30. Nice one there. Oh, she got to it. Oh, just wide. Advantage. Oh! On the line is in, folks. On the line is in, and that was very much on the line. In fact, both of those were, but she gets back to advantage. And nice ace to win the game, and now it is the game to win the set and the match if we can take this game. 5-2, tack the net. Nice ball, and that is the opening point. 15 love. Oof, nice aggressive hit there from uh, Chager. Got her back on her heels just a moment, but she recovered well. She's really working that net and finally got us out of position enough. I thought she should have had the ace on that one, but not called in. Ooh, umpire really calling things tight right now, and we give it away. Unforced errors. Thirty love. Ooh, terrible first serve. Terrible second serve. It was only even slightly closer. Giving away points. Double faults. That's two we've already seen in barely, just barely more than one game played. 40-15. Ooh, how was that not in? I thought we had the ace. Game, set, match. Semifinals. Here we come. Shocking circumstances as we go to head into the semifinals. Frifertova forfeited early in the first set. She's out. The seven seed moves on. The three seed gets through her match. We've played uh, Montgomery a few times, but she's out. And then Corey Goff upsetting Ita. So what a showdown here. We're not going to get Fertova potentially in the final as the three seed. Nakiova has already gone through anyway, so we know who we're up against. It's the one who's just behind us in the rankings. In terms of points, I don't think she can catch us. I mean, there's like a thousand point gap behind us or almost 1,500 points. So we should be fine. Even if Goff knocks us off, I think we're okay in terms of points scored to hang on to the number one ranking. But we have a real opportunity here. And then a massive opportunity to get through Corey Goff. You know, the one who totally rejected us. Can we beat Corey Goff? I think this match is more important than even the final. And when you consider that Goff has beaten us both times, and Goff is three stars. She's got the quality that the others don't have. She's just not been playing in the junior tour very much. She's been focused on the world tour. She's 18. She's aging out. She's ready and already participating on a regular basis at world tour level so her rank has dropped significantly recently because she's just not playing at this level anymore but that doesn't mean that she's weak it's just the you know, number of tournaments at this level so we're we're she's got to be the best in the top 10 of the junior rankings in terms of actual ability so good luck we're gonna need it All right, so here we go. The big matchup against Goff. Goff is enthusiastic. Kazanseva was troubled yet again, but this time the pre-match talk actually benefited her. She went to reassured. Now she's unfazed. It lasted for barely a moment, but she's won the first two games, and her morale's gone down. So th there you go. There's her weakness really showing itself, but she's off to a fantastic start in this one as she leads three games We still had rhythm, but Goff finally has picked up some rhythm of her own. And now you're seeing the, the quality of Goff is beginning to shine and we lose two straight games. Can we battle back? This is without service. We were up f 
we were up, and we still end up losing. Three straight games for Goff. She started slow, and we started well. And we're still playing well, but Goff really, really played three strong games there. 4-4 four, four now, as it's a bit more even. Goff has settled a little bit, and now both of them are pretty balanced, pretty even right now. Both attacking the net there. We come out on top of that one. And finally, 5-4. Chance to take the first set. Thirty thirty now forty thirty. Let's keep that three quarter angle, but slow down. And she goes just a hair too deep, and we win the first set. Halfway towards the finals. Oh. We get through this, you can pretty much guarantee we'll take that number one ranking. Like I said, well, I'd like the tournament as well, but I think beating Goff here is going to matter even more. Love. A lot down the middle there, conceding ground to Goff, and Goff ultimately takes the point and the game. Now we start working the sides a little bit better. But Goff is responding to each one. Finally, we get a, a slam there to put that one away. Advantage, 2-1. Oof, nice ball just in the corner. Goff is not working the corners very well, but she's kind of returning everything right down the middle on us. And because she's not being very aggressive, we are slowly... Gaining the advantage, keeping enough balls in, it's 4-1. We're getting a lot of winners right now. Deuce. Oh. Had every chance to win that game and just about seal the match, but she battled back. Goff is a fighter. But if she stays defensive, I think we've got this. It is 4-3, though. She's... One, two straight, and looking likely to get three straight at this point. It's getting dangerous. She's got that rhythm again. She's on fire. Goff is a bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Streaky. Inconsistent. Her confidence had dipped until she won that fourth game, equaling it. But now back to anxious, and we are self-assured. So finally, a little bit of co confidence for Kasanseva. And at 5-4, this could be it. It says match point, but it's deuce. Advantage. We had match point, but now we've given it away. Ooh, that was just in. Deuce. Long. There you go. Back to deuce. Yes, yes. Come on, you got her on her heels. Nope. Didn't take advantage of it. Nice power shot. Oh, excellent ball. So deep in the corner, and Goff got it anyway. Wide. Out. Ball. Second set. Oh, come on. Footwork. Footwork. 5-5. Five, five. Ooh, nice one. A lot of power on that. Ooh. That should have been in. Got to have words with the umpire on that one. Nice one, working across. You got her. Oh. She went out. She went long. Ooh, nice one. Nice winner. Very nice winner. Ooh. Double fault. That was out. That was out. 40-15. I just wanted it to the end. There it is! Game! 6-5. Ay ay ay. There's that footwork she needs work on. It's where she gets beat. Oof, just, just, just in. And that was just in, but really, really nice ball. Not only to get there, but to get it in the other way and make it unplayable. She finally gets a point in this game, but uh, looks like we're headed to tiebreakers in a moment. Yep, and here we go. To the tiebreaker. 
Second serve. Good second serve. Ay, ay, ay. Terrible ball. Gosh, she had all day to line that one up. That was just a hair long. Thought that was in. Oh, we've already seen. I'm calling it tight. Oh, I thought that was going to beat her. She reacts quick enough, and now we trail two points to nothing already. Sorry, love. 2-1. Oh, really poor first serve. Good second serve, though. Yeah, good position. Come on, come on, you got this. There you go. Nice one, okay. And we battle back. Just in for Goff. I thought it was long, but uh, in the end it dropped. Second set. If she had more power on that, that would have been a point right there. There's a good one. Ooh, yes. Goff gets there, but she can't keep it in. Really? Really? Ump's been calling everything tight and then calls that one in. Nice one. Nice one again. Oh, Goff returned it. Volley still going on. Oh, what? Says who? Umpire. Let's let's talk. Let's talk. Somebody pull out your wallet. Go have a chat with the umpire. Be like Man City. Be like Man City. No, don't be like Man City. It's going to take another set. Boy, we got screwed there, though. Hers was out, got called in. Ours was in, got called out. So says my eyes. Goff wins the first game. But it's 30 love here in game number two. Now 40. And there you go. We draw level. Come on. With service has gone the way of the game so far. Through looks like four games. Yes. Two apiece. Can we break? Deuce. Advantage. Back to deuce. <laughs> Goff constantly with the upper hand, but we keep battling back. Finally, after deuce about five times, Goff wins and then steals the game from us. Uh, uh oh. I told you Goff was going to be. Goff should be winning this tournament, this finals tournament, hands down. As the 18-year-old, as the experienced player, as the one who's already three-star. And she's got us. That's it. That's it. Two bad calls took our only chance away from us. And then she comfortably takes set number three out in the semifinals. But the number one rank should be ours before we, like Goff, start focusing on senior level. Final rankings for the end of the year. The indoor season now behind us. And Lowell drops to 40th. She only won 37 points. She played three tournaments and only won a single match. So one and three is her record. So just a 25% win record. We thought last season was bad at two and seven or two and five. One and three. Oh my goodness. And what is going on? Look at the income or lack thereof. Ouch, 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 ouch. But meanwhile, Kasanseva, just one tournament, just one match. She got knocked out. It was the highest level we've been in, and she was close in that match. It was the highest ranked opponent she's played. She's not quite there at the 250 level for World Tour, but she is definitely below the bottom tier. So next season, we'll focus on those type of matches, but we're going to do a lot of training. Not going to worry about the money as much because, well, Anne is there for that. And I certainly hope by early next season we'll have somebody signed to join us. Still says we are second in the rankings. I'm going to have to check on that because I don't see how that would be. Prize money solid. Five tournaments, 25 wins in 26 played at the youth level. 96% win percentage. That's two straight. 
That was five tournaments versus six the last time, but yeah, wow. What a win record that is. Payout for the first of Anne's uh, sponsorship deals has come back. Not a big payout, actually. And she only earned a single ranking bonus overall. She picked up a decent amount of money, but our share from her earnings was not the 100000 that it could be. Our share ended up about twenty seven, twenty eight thousand. 28000 which, uh, I mean, hey, come on, 27, 28000 That's a decent amount of money. Uh, but it's definitely not what it was when we were focused on Anne as our leader. So I need Kass and Save to start developing and fast uh, so we can get her into bigger tournaments than what she'll be able to play in right now. So we're going to focus more on training for a while and then just kind of slowly wean her into uh, bigger and bigger world tour races and then uh, competitions and, and then uh, get her off uh, junior tours altogether other than like grand slams she'll have ranking points to kind of hang on for those and yes we actually have moved up to the number one ranking so Kasan Seva number one in the junior rankings by 400 points ahead of Frit Vertova I did do my math correctly on that one. It just hadn't counted the, the way this game kind of calculates. It looks back at the start of the week, not the end of the week. And so it gives you the, that feedback before that last tournament is actually accounted for. Nakiava and Goff, third and fourth. I have a feeling that, that Goff very well could have won. I don't know, actually. What happened with that one? It was Goff. Goff took the win. Having not improved this year, Anne sits in the same boat, and so her sponsorship deals have all renewed for another year at the same value as what they were. Hopefully we should see a huge influx of cash here in just a moment. And there's confirmation on the circuit victory of the girls' junior level champion, Victoria Jimenez Kazanseva. Well, Rafael Nadal and Naomi Osaka won the men's and women's tournament, respectively, this year. I never saw the influx of cash from Anne. I don't know if it was a bug. There was no signing bonus that came through, and I was supposed to get a cut of that. So, not sure what happened there, but at least we do have this bit of good news. 304000 from the board injected in. So, that now puts us at 408,000. Let's go ahead and take a look at our infrastructure. The business center is going to be done quite soon. We can also see that the sports center, the next upgrade, which it's on level three, the business center will be level three here shortly. The next upgrade costs 420,000. We are only 12k shy of that. So we're going to save up a little bit of money and instantly reinvest it to the business center. Right now we bring in revenues of 7000 per month from the business center. I believe, it's my understanding, that that's about to jump to 15000 And then with that next upgrade, if we're adding 8000 on top of 7000 does that mean we'll add 15000 on top of 15000 It would be really nice if that's the case, if we can get to 30000 a month. Base income, obviously, we'll add some more coaches as we do f eventually find this third athlete, but in terms of cost, we're going to barely be 20000 or so. So we'd already be starting at a profit of 10000 That's going to make it a lot easier to start focusing on development of a Kostanseva or another young up-and-coming talent, focusing on Ann Lowell and not having to worry about tournaments and, and the payout uh, just to stay afloat as a business. Looking forward to that prospect. And then eventually... You know, we'll, we'll get involved in the medical center and youth scouting centers and, and getting those going. Having another scout would obviously help in finding uh, better talent. But that sports center for now, I think we're, we're good on level three for a while. I, I don't think we need to uh, worry about that one as much. I knew this was inevitable that they would both taketh and giveth. They already gaveth, so now they have taketh, as in they took 20000 Uh Not bad. Not bad at all, considering they gave us 300000 So uh, overall, 
we add quite a bit of money, 388,000. Still not that far off from the 420 we need for the next upgrade. For those who follow my series on Pro Cycling Manager, specifically the career mode series, especially if in seasons past you've followed it, you'd be well aware that Continental is easy in terms of scheduling. World Tour is easy in terms of scheduling. Continental Pro, it's tricky. And the reason being is you have the combination of different levels of races and you don't know what your schedule is quite going to look like. I'm now the equivalent of Conti Pro. When you are focused almost entirely on junior level, you have one calendar to look at and you make your registrations. When you are World Tour, you have one calendar to look at to make your registrations. When you are somewhere in between, which we now are, we're trying to build as a world tour competitor that's where you get into that tricky bit that we now have of i have two different calendars to look at and so i'm having to do this well the hard way so junior tour is i'm finding is easier to start with that one because there's always world tour level competitions to join and get involved in so as we plan our first season uh, for the beginning of the year I've picked out just three junior tournaments to partake in. And then other than that, it's all going to be either training or world tour and probably only three or four world tour tournaments anyway. But I have to now keep track either through memory or to write things down to know when these tournaments are so that I can then go to the world tour and kind of plan accordingly. So on the junior calendar, we're going to take a 300 level tournament the smallest one we're going to participate in and the only 300 that we'll bother with. We have our Grand Slam. That's why I took that one is I want to warm up. We'll take that week off in between. No tournament there. And then we have a while until our next four weeks. And it's the only 500 level tournament. And that's what I would have liked to have done uh, before we go down under. But it's okay. We'll, we'll take this one. And then the whole rest of that season, nothing. So backing off a little bit, we'll go for the max points, one 300, one Grand Slam junior, and then one 500 level tournament. As for the memory part, help me out here. You'll, you'll remind me, right? No, <laughs> you don't need to remind me. I'll be done recording by then. This isn't live. Well, anyway, two, four, and eight. So weeks two, four, and eight. Then we'll go in here. I've already picked one, and before I jumped over to the junior going, wait, 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 I need to do these. That's actually 52, so it's a week ahead of time. So we'll take week one off. We've got week two off. Uh, no to week three. No to week four. We'll take a week off. That gives us week six. We have eight already booked. So we'll see, what can we do with week six? I don't want the 10 level tournaments. We crush those. I think this first season, we're gonna start focusing on the 50 levels. Try to get involved with a slightly higher level of competition. Payout's a little bit better anyway. And where will we want to go for this one? Surprise, Arizona. Nothing for seven, nothing for eight. Do we want a tournament in nine or do we want a rest? Let's take a rest. We have 10, 11, or 12, or th wait, how far down? All the way to 13. Let's go 11 and 13. That way we'll have a couple weeks off following that other one. Time to train, time to recover. See if the uh, morale turns out a bit better this year as a result. Okay, we don't have any 50 level. So we'll take the clay. I don't know how, we're not pet bad on any surface, so I suppose we should be okay. 13. All right, there you go. There is our schedule upcoming as we prepare for the season. We are already seeing additional development as, uh, what was it, tactical skills, I think, just went to a 14. Those are strong numbers. Some strong numbers out there. Intelligence is high and highest for Gazanzeva, but it's that mental part. 
natural development. Hopefully we see some of that this season. Really, really hopefully see some of that this season. Early, I want to start working on that contract with Anne because I don't think we're going to get anything similar to her talent anytime soon. So we'll have to, we'll have to work hard. Cost and save it now, 17, but going to work at that world level a bit more, or at least split between them and split that with training as well. A lot more going on, a lot more management, but that's okay. Hopefully with a little funds, we'll get that next upgrade coming and just keep right on rolling with that. The extra 8000 a month obviously won't hurt for trying to raise those funds quicker. She's a little more experienced now. Her fame has grown to a level 6. It's good. It's good. Uh, morale is coming along better than it was. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be the major thing we have to continue to monitor and manage. Short term, I think the agility and footwork and speed are things that I need to specifically train. The skill, the technical stuff, it'll come along. The best trainer is myself. That's not my area. So we'll work on the physical, mental things that we can do. Bring those up to quality levels like that 14, that 13. We want to get those up. Get them all high. And then she's already got a few other things. She's got some power. She's okay on accuracy. So serving her her racket work is good. It's just kind of the more specialized skills that she is still lagging behind on the drop shot, the lob, the hot shots. Not good. But the smash is good. And we've seen her score with that smash a fair bit. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I'm Kathleen Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. And bye for now.